This video is sponsored by Clip Studio Paint. Hello, I am Naimi Kanani and welcome to my video. I was contacted by Clip Studio Paint in April this year to try out their digital painting program. And now I finally found the time to review it. The program I regularly use is Adobe Photoshop and Procreate. So this will be my opinion as a new user. In this video, I will be sharing my full illustration process. Starting with a rough sketch for the illustration. I always draw a circle first when drawing the head, so I can roughly know the size on the canvas. I find it much easier to control the angle of the face. The face tends to turn out odd if I draw the details of the face first, before laying out the form of the head. I enjoy drawing the hair because it is therapeutic and creates a nice composition of the canvas. I'm figuring out the pose of the shoulder and the clothing she is wearing. Before I make a huge change, I duplicate my sketch so I can compare my ideas. I will talk about the overall layout of the windows in the program that I moved and organized. My initial reaction to opening Clip Studio Paint. Just like starting any program, I felt overwhelmed by the information in front of me. My advice is to watch some beginner's tutorials and to learn the easy stuff step by step. My process of learning Clip Studio Paint was just googling my questions about where the tools were and how to use the features in the program. As a person who chose aesthetic over everything else, I changed the overall color to white, deleted and reorganized all the windows or panels. The only windows that I left open are the command bar, quick access, tool, subtool, tools property, brush size, color wheel, color slider, color history, layer, and navigator. What's interesting about Clip Studio Paint is that they have three buttons to separate the pencil, ink, and brush. You can also drag the tools in different order so you can put the tools you use the most on top. Since I use only a few brushes, I put all of my favorite brushes in the one brush button, and I drag the other two brush tools to the bottom. I custom changed the Z keyboard shortcut for the brush button by going to the shortcut settings. Also X keyboard for the eraser button. I want to quickly talk about Clip Studio Paint's app launcher called Clip Studio. It is where you can manage your files, materials, and assets. What I like is that you can visit Clip Studio Assets, which is like a marketplace for artists uploading brushes, 3D objects, textures, etc. A brush I found that I use for sketching is a brush called Artemis Hard from the Artemis pencil set. The next step is to create color compositions. Doing small multiple thumbnails so I don't focus on the details. If you have difficulty choosing colors, I recommend collecting multiple images for inspiration to find the aesthetic you're going for. As you can see, I made multiple color thumbnails. I wasn't satisfied with the color for the first few ones I've created. I understand how frustrating it can be when you haven't figured out which one to choose, but have faith and keep trying. Choose the color that will inspire you to finish the drawing. Make sure to make copies of the sketch and the colored layers to check your progress. I put everything into one folder and duplicated it, so that when I decide to merge everything into one layer, 
I feel more comfortable, and I don't have to worry about my previous multiple layers. Sometimes it's important to compare your sketch because it is much more expressive and you can lose that expression as you paint over your line work. My painting style is pretty simple. I mostly just paint like I am traditionally painting by painting over my work. I avoid separating all the specific parts of the illustration because it will block my creative progress. As I work on one layer, sometimes I will duplicate and hide the layer under to check back so I can compare how much I worked and changed. As I paint, I am thinking about a simple light source. I am putting a mental note that the light is coming from the top left. I am challenging myself to make more soft edges because I tend to paint with a lot of hard edges when digitally painting. The eyedropper tool is the tool I use the most when blending and rendering the illustration. If I use the blending tool to mix the color on the canvas, it will make it muddy and unflattering. I also want to mention to make sure you are not zooming in too close to the canvas when painting. This was a common mistake I made when I first started painting digitally. It is extremely easy to get drawn into the details, but it will make the result look stiff. Make a habit of zooming out of your painting and even take a step back by standing up. It is important to constantly check from a different angle. This is why I sometimes even send the image to my phone to check for mistakes. If you are struggling, take a day off and come back the next day to see it from a different mindset. Now to talk about the list of features I like in Clip Studio Paint. The lasso tool works with multiple layers selected. This means that you can move selected objects without merging the layers together. It has a nice butter stroke feeling. It is interesting how every programs have a different feeling when painting, and I found Clip Studio Paint to feel smoother in sensitivity. You can change the pressure sensitivity within the program. If you go to Clip Studio Paint, you can find the pen pressure settings. Try playing with the sensitivity to find the right amount of pressure for you. It has a really nice blending tool. What I like about the blend tool is that you can adjust the amount of blend very easily. The navigator box can go out of the edge of canvas. I use the navigator box to pan and zoom in and out of the image. And it's amazing how I can go out of the edge of the image. The Clip Studio Assets Marketplace I find it really nice to be able to easily find all the tools and many free brushes in one place, so I don't have to go searching on the internet. Quick Access This is an interesting feature where you can custom add your shortcuts in a window. Lots of Color History or Swatch as an artist who uses the eyedropper constantly, it's nice to have a large library of recent swatches when painting. Lastly, time lapse. Just like Procreate, you can export a process video. Some things will change with the release of version 2, which is coming out in the first half of 2023. The one-time purchase will still be available for desktop, but you'll need an update pass for new feature updates after the version 2 release. The stability updates for version 2 and version 1 will continue. I will link the website down in the description which explains the changes. There will be no changes for smartphone and tablet users or anyone else not on the one-time purchase license. 
This means the monthly or annual plans will always be able to use the updated version of the app, even after version 2's release. If you would like to experience the program, Clip Studio Paint offers a 3-month free trial for anyone who is interested to trying it out for themselves. Overall, I like how Clip Studio focuses on creating the program for artists. They have unique features that are different from other programs. And for you, it can be worth one of the lists to keep using the program. I hope you enjoy watching the process of my illustration. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.